What's going on guys, this is EasyPCTech, I'm a Codezilla and this is going to be a video tutorial for the newest software from the creator of the Ryzen calculator, Yuri Bubli, more well known as One Asmus, and I'm talking about the CTR or clock tuner for Ryzen. But before we begin, click subscribe button so you're not gonna miss the newest videos and the coolest stuff from the hardware and software world. So what is a CTR? CTR, this is an automatic CCX overclocking and undervolting tool for Ryzen's, Threadrippers and Epic CPUs. Many people think that overclocking this is some sort of black magic that is available only for advanced users. And this is partially right because it could be pretty hard for the newcomer to get a nice and successful overclock from the first time. And that's why CTR was developed. It allows everyone to get more performance from their system without any specific knowledge or experience. So let's jump right to the process and we'll begin with the recommendations and preparation steps. What you will need is a Windows 10 X64, obviously a Ryzen CPU starting from Ryzen 3000, bias with a GSA 1004 or newer, .NET Framework 4.6, if you have your Windows update on, you should have a newest one. Ryzen Master 2.3 or newer, you can download it for free from the AMD website. And the motherboard based on a chipset 350, 370, 450, 470, 550 or 570. And any power plant is going to work with the CTR, so you don't need to worry about it. Now let's quickly go through the BIOS settings. If you have any sort of performance enhancer, performance BIOS or AI overclock tuner, you want to set them to default or disable them for now. Most importantly, your CPU core voltage or vCore must be set to auto. The CPU load line calibration is recommended to set to level 3 or medium level, whatever is called on your particular motherboard. The precision boost overdrive obviously have to be disabled to don't let it interrupt the process. I would highly recommend you to enable global C state control at least after overclocking process for the best idle temperatures and power efficiency. And the virtual machine, if you are not using it, you want to disable it in the BIOS for the best overclock stability. And despite it's not a requirement for the CTR, this is my personal recommendation to turn on CPPC and CPPC preferred cores if you have it in the BIOS. It will significantly improve your system responsiveness and overall performance with the CCX overclock, but more on that later. Now let's take a look at the CTR itself. As soon as you open the program, you will see a disclaimer and I recommend you to read it at least once. If you will click on the home page, you will be redirected to the Twitter of Juan Asmus and I recommend you to subscribe to him because he's posting a lot of cool things that you're not gonna find on the media. Now the most interesting part, the main page, because this is where the most of the action happening. Here on top you can find uh, some information, like number of your CCX and uh, I know that many people complaining that they're missing some CCX here. So you guys are not missing anything. I'll quickly explain uh, what's going on here. The processors from 3800X and below have one CCD and that one CCD contains two CCX. Okay, so if you have 3300X, 3600X, 3700X and 3800X, you will have just two CCX here and everything else will be blank. It's fine, that, that the way it's supposed to be. If you have 3900X and up, you'll have four CCX or more in case of Threadripper or Epic. Here are the temperatures for each CCX, which could be a useful thing. Uh, the current frequencies for each core and this numbers, this is the quality of each core according to your system. And as you can see, the first CCX has the best quality of the cores, a little bit worse quality on CCX2, even worse quality on CCX3, and the CCX4 not as great, I would say. Many people will be surprised with that, but there's nothing wrong with that, because this is the way Ryzen CPUs are being made. And this is not an issue, because CCX overclock allows to overclock each CCX to the highest level. 
So it's not like the old way to overclock when you overclocking all cores to the same frequency and ending up with the stable frequencies on your worst cores. It doesn't work this way here. We actually don't care that we have some uh, not great cores here because we'll push this CC axis up and we'll, we'll get more performance after all. So don't worry about it. Here down below is some information that could be useful for you, such as CPU usage, the current voltage, uh, CPU package in watts. This is the amount of watts that your CPU is going to consume and EDC and TDC in amperes. Now let's take a look here because this is the, actually the most important part of the main page. So the cycle time. What is cycle time? This is basically a duration of the stress test and you can set amount of time that your CPU will be stressed after each time when the frequency was increased. We made an extensive testing and it's not recommended to go below 240 seconds. You can go above if you want some incredible level of reliability but not below because i wouldn't trust much uh, the really short stress testing just keep in mind that with a regular overclock you have to stress test your cpu for much longer period of time with a prime 95 so let it run for at least that 240 seconds now the CCX Delta, what it is and why it's even here. So we tested multiple CPUs and we found a perfect spot for each CPU model. So when you just start the program, it's automatically getting the information from your CPU and set the Delta to the place where it's supposed to be. For 3900X, it will be one Delta. For other processor, it will be different Delta, but you basically do not need to change it. However, if you want to play around, you can try to increase it, or if you have uh, any other ideas, you can decrease it actually. Polling period in milliseconds, this is simply a refresh rate for this info on top, and you can set it to whatever you like. Testing mode. As it's obvious from the name, this is the way how your CPU will be tested. AVX Lite should be more than sufficient for most of the people for gaming and any sort of normal usage. However, if you use heavy AVX loads, you are doing some rendering stuff, or if you need AVX 2, I would recommend you to go with the AVX Heavy. You will get a little bit lower frequencies, but in the same time, it's going to be a rock solid stability. Initial frequency smart shift, this is a really cool feature because as I explained it before, each CCX have its own quality and we know that the first two will overclock better than the last two. So we can add up a little bit in the beginning of the test to the first two CCX and it will save us a lot of time. So we recommend it to keep this option on it. Now CB20 testing. It allows you to run the Cinebench 20 test in the beginning and the end of the process. So you'll have a great idea what you had in the beginning, in other words, baseline, and you will know how much performance you gain it after we will finish. So it's a really cool thing. In order to run the Cinebench 20 testing in the beginning and the end, go to the folder where your CTR, you'll find another folder called CB20. Now navigate to the location where is your Cinebench 20 installed and whatever you find there, just copy to the folder called CB20. Now you're good to go. Two tray option. It's probably obvious what does it do. It minimizes the CTR to the tray. And it seems like it's not so useful feature, but since the program do absolutely everything for you automatically, you can just fold it to the tray, relax and go browse the internet or search for some cool hardware for your system. And Auto load profile with operating system is a really cool thing, especially for the guys with the older motherboards and those guys who don't have a CCX overclocking option in the BIOS. So what it do, it 
automatically load your overclocking or undervolting profile as soon as your system booted up. And this is a great thing because it allows everyone to use CCX overclock regardless you have that CCX overclocking option or you don't. And now before you rush and click the start button, here is a really cool thing. So here is a diagnostic button. What it actually do, it set the base frequency and then start to gradually undervolt your CPU step by step by 6 millivolts. And it goes down until the point when the CTR will find some instability. And this way we will evaluate the quality of your CPU and in the end of the process you will get automatic values for your overclock and undervolt and also some additional information that might be very interesting and useful for you. So let's try it out. Alright, so the CDR finished the diagnostic and here is some interesting info that I promised you before. Here is the energy efficiency of my processor, 3.8 which is pretty decent. Surprisingly I still have 3900X and it appears to be a gold sample. It's not bad at all, but this could be a platinum level as well, so you might be more lucky than me. Now recommended values for overclocking and undervolting. This is a really amazing thing because it automatically determines the right values for your processor and give you a great idea what you should start with. This is not an end value, mind you. This is just the beginnings. And those values will be automatically imported to the required fields, so you simply can click start button and begin the overclocking process. Or if you want to undervolt your processor, you can just copy recommended values to the fields on the left and you're ready to start. Alright, so now we're all set, you can just click start and let the CDR to do its magic. Okay, the process is done and let's see what we got. We got 4400 MHz on first two CCX and 4300 MHz on another two CCX at just 1250 millivolts. This is an outstanding performance to voltage ratio. By the way, that little signs on the right that you see, that equal sign and plus uh, during the scanning process, gives you an idea which CCX is still overclocking and which one already done. Fine, it's time to take a look at the benchmarks. Alright, let's see what we got here. So, we are at actually lower voltage than we had by default. Meanwhile, the power consumption, your PPT, remained literally the same while we are 400 MHz above the default frequency. Just look at the measurable stock frequencies and where we are now. This is really cool. Just look at the gain in uh, performance. This is a 10% difference, which is comparable to switching from older CPU to new generation. Absolutely free without any effort whatsoever. This is surely makes Clock Tuner for Ryzen the most advanced utility for enthusiasts, gamers, overclockers, and pretty much everyone who wants to get more performance from their system. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do, let me know in the comments how much performance you were able to get and I would truly appreciate if you like and share this video because I participated in the creation of this tool and that would be a great way to say thank you. And if you are not subscribed yet, click subscribe and that little bell button because we are planning to post a lot of new cool stuff like that that we are sure you are going to enjoy. And if you want to support the channel, you can get us a cup of coffee with a PayPal. The link will be in the description down below. Well, we're running coffee here. <laughs>